injecting several franchises to plastic form each year, the LEGO games from Traveler's Tales follow an enjoyable but predictable format. With an open Gotham City to explore and full voice acting, LEGO Batman 2 DC Super Heroes builds beyond the boundaries of past LEGO titles. But does it truly break the mold? You like missiles, Batman? Because I think they're going to like you! Come to get your watch back? Or did a bus from Metropolis get lost and break down? As the subtitle implies, LEGO Batman 2 isn't all about the dynamic duo, but just barely. An alliance between Lex Luthor and the Joker makes Superman a regular addition to your team, but you won't be joined by other members of the Justice League like Wonder Woman and Green Lantern until the final chapters. The addition of voice acting may take some time for LEGO veterans to get used to, but it's much easier to follow than the usual grunts and pantomimes. While these aren't the same voices fans know from Arkham City in the animated series, they do a fair job of conveying each character's personality. It's still about light-hearted humor overall, emphasizing the rivalry between Superman and Batman instead of delving into dark backstory. Hey guys! Need a hand? With what? Parking. Hi guys! Wow! Calm down. Keeping in line with past games, LEGO Batman 2's story consists of 15 levels, taking about 7 to 8 hours to complete if you save collectible hunting for later. The main difference is that the hub world has now expanded from what was essentially a walkable menu to a full open world city. With a wide range of vehicles in the mix, it can at times resemble GTA as you hop into any car you find, wreck city property, and mow down panicked pedestrians. The city is full of places to explore, and while the roller coaster at the amusement park is disappointing, visiting the zoo for a giraffe-fueled rampage makes up for it. Of course, it wouldn't be Batman if you stayed on the street, and you'll often find routes to the rooftops calling for special gadgets, while other spots require flying characters. Unfortunately, even if you've unlocked a few heroes and villains along the way, you won't be able to use them in Gotham until you finish the entire story. There are still hundreds of items to collect, citizens to rescue, and characters to unlock. And yes, you still have to play through every story mission a second time to get them all. Finding items in the hub, though, is much easier thanks to a scanner that shows the location of every hidden item. The map itself isn't the best aid to navigation, as it doesn't show which direction you're facing, but with a bit of trial and error, it gets the job done. One pesky flaw comes with the new mid-level save points. These stations are designed to let you quit where you are and come back later, but instead of reloading directly at the checkpoint, you have to drive back to the level from the back cave. If you go straight there, you'll pick up where you left off. However, if you get distracted and snag a few gold bricks on the way, you have to start the level from scratch when you return, oddly punishing the incentive to explore. I mean, if we just call him. Robin, we can't go through life expecting Superman or anyone else to save us whenever things get tough. While there are a few new bricks in the game's overall design, the gameplay is still about using specific abilities to clear obstacles. The story levels take you to familiar locations like Arkham Asylum and the Ace Chemical Plant, with some high-speed chases and shooting galleries in between. Batman and Robin's extensive collection of gadgets take the form of various suits with different functions such as blowing up metal objects, wall jumping, or spraying liquids. Since the game is designed with co-op in mind, there are some areas where you'll need to switch back and forth between multiple characters to advance. Once Superman becomes playable, you'll also get to take advantage of his heat vision, frost breath, and of course, flight. The other 47 characters in the game are certainly underused. You get a few moments of greatness with Green Lantern and Cyborg, but others like The Flash just fill out the ranks in free play. The same can be said of the brief brawls to unlock villains and Riddler's puzzle boxes, which fail to inspire. While the controls work well for the fixed perspective of the story missions, trying to fly Superman to a specific rooftop can be clumsy, and you'll have to fight the camera at times. Plus, getting the Batmobile stuck once in a while seems inevitable. That said, the powers at your disposal are genuinely fun to use, the urge to bash everything in sight is irresistible, and there's joy to be found in little moments like racing a paddle boat at the park.
Although Gotham City does offer a greater sense of scale, the look of LEGO Batman 2 falls safely in line with past games, placing interactive LEGO objects amid static, realistic backgrounds. The comic animations still play a huge part in the game's charm, and there are some larger set-piece moments as well. Relying heavily on the music from the Batman and Superman films, the score's repetition can grow tiresome as the iconic fanfare jumps in any time you get near an enemy. With an expansive city to explore between levels, LEGO Batman 2 can easily be likened to an Arkham City light. The promise of playing with other DC superheroes isn't brought to its full potential, as the story remains laser-focused on Batman, Robin, and Superman. But there's a fun, family-friendly adventure for these three leads. I can see you smirking in there. X-ray vision. Aren't there people somewhere else that need your help right now? Yeah, actually there are. I should go. See you guys.